now. We've had a bunch of different winners. Who gets the job done today in Western Australia? Great jump, Brody. Excellent jump. Sufficient to be able to close down. We've got one of the shell cars on the grass, and Kostecki in the Coca-Cola entry leads them to turn one. Bad start by James Courtney. So beautiful getaway by Brody on the clean side of the road. James Courtney from six has been punched in the rear of the car. Corley Jones in an awkward spot out there in the marbles at the left-hander at turn four as we pick up on the J-car. Driver's eye view with James Courtney over the top of the hill. Handy little cushion for Kostecki down the hill for the first time. Got a tiny little bit of margin over Van Gisberg and then it's Reynolds followed by Jack LeBrock. Congestion in the mid-pack through the right-hander at turn six. And Heimgartner trying to claw his way back into the action in the red, white and black R&J batteries entry. Kostecki opens up a little margin. Or dive bomb down the inside, and is it a clean move for Will Davison on Thomas Randall? Not quite. And the bash plate on the Randall car hitting the top of that turn seven curve, and they all dive to the right hand side, covering James Courtney in there as well on the run into turn one. This is the view from James Courtney. This will be lively because he was the one that got hit. So it wasn't the best start, but watch this in here. He gets a whack, see the feel that. Oh, big save, actually, good save. Stayed on the black stuff, nice job. Oh, here we go. <laughs> wow, that was close. This is for the lead, thanks, Mark. So all of a sudden, Brody's vulnerable and he's chasing across to the other side of the road. Van Gisbergen's right with him in the braking area. So he'll look for the crisscross. He's out wide for the turning and he'll wipe across the rear bumper and try and get underneath him on the inside. He's trying to ideally position for a run down here into turn one. I think he's actually going to get this done. He's done it. Now, where did the margin disappear? So they've been able to buy for the lead here by lap 18 in car number 97 for the Red Bull Ampole Racing Team. This is the replay of the crisscross. So the Bunnings Trade Power Pass, beautifully executed, gets off the corner and is able to position the car, parks it on the pit straight, on the inside, into turn one. Now it's back on again. So these are live pictures and into the pit lane comes Brody Kostecki. That was close. That was close, but the crowd reaction was fantastic as you can hear them in the background. So the undercut so far has worked for everybody who's done it versus who they've been racing. So this might be smart. If you put the tire on, get out there, make a really good stop. Van Giesbergen will have to respond. He'll have to come in the following lap, probably. And they'll be keeping a very close eye further up the lane here at the Red Bull Ampole Racing Team at how long that stop was, what the pace was prior to the stop, what everybody else is doing and what it looks like immediately after. And 3.2, 3.2, and this is the undercut. Yeah, got him. So how that's worked, yeah. straight away it's worked. So Reynolds could be the leader of this race. 3.2 seconds was the stop, Neil, for Brody. A bit unusual. Brad Jones Racing have been pretty efficient when it comes to their oh. stops, and uh, that was nasty, wasn't it? Per tick. Pit stop competition has been won by them quite a few times, and Pertec, in fact, have just re-signed again with supercars. Oh, Heimgartner and Waters. So we've seen that happen here a few times over the years, and this is the onboard from Andre's car. So Cam it physically has to check up a bit in order to be able to get into the lane, and Heimgartner's whacked him. This is the dive. We missed it. We were on board with the Jack Smith drummer in the pit lane. That was the dive by Brody on David Reynolds. That was a good stop, Mark. They rattled those wheels and tyres on with no fuss at all. So we'll see what that number looks like. Oh, oh, it's showing a 1.8 on our computer. That looked Formula One fast to me. It, that's why I remarked. If that's right, that, that's blindingly quick. Shane's looking to get down the inside at turn six. Now, Brody covers. But what he's got to do now, don't run in too hard. Hold the car to the inside and come out of the throttle. Don't let him down the inside. Hold it there, hold it there, hold it there. That's it, well done. Yep. Nice job. But he's still gonna have a crack down the inside here, Van Gisbergen, but Brody's a wake up. He makes him go the long way. He drives it down the right-hand side of the road. So he forces him wide on the approach into the final corner. Now Van Gisbergen looks to try and crisscross on the rear bumper of that car. You'll have another crack down here at turn one. 
Brody again tries to cover down here. This is going to be the lively battle that we talked about. A little bit of rear brake locking that time for Van Gisbergen and as things start to heat up on the run to turn one, an evidence of the Red Bull car sliding. Great battle now with three laps remaining. Six odd kilometres. It's worth the fight if you're Brody Kostecki. He slides a little wide into the left-hander at four and he gets a little love tap from Shane. He'll get another one here, so he comes out of the throttle. There's starting to be a bit of radio chat now. Once again, Van Gisbergen down the inside. He forces the issue. Kostecki is not going to yield in a hurry. He drives down the inside. They are locked in combat and he's doing what Mark Scaife suggested. He's driving up the inside and he continues to drive down the inside. He's permitted to do that. Van Gisbergen to the outside. What a great battle. And that is exactly what he needs to do. But what he's got to do is prop it here too. Prop it, prop it, prop it. Now, has he got enough for a run this time? It's very close. And he's allowed to chop across the road like that, provided there's no overlap. And again now, we've got great racing on the run into one. It's almost turned into one 10-metre car. They are locked together, nose to tail. What a battle. We've got two laps remaining. If Kostecki can hang on to this, it'll be something of a mighty resistance and miracle because he's under extreme pressure. Race control pressure. to all teams. Bad sportsmanship flag to car 99 for blocking. Bad sportsmanship flag for Kostecki. And now the issue being forced down the inside. It's on. Push and shove and push and shove and down the inside. And here comes Davey. Reynolds is going to be a beneficiary. He dives to the inside. And does he get him? He's awkwardly positioned at the moment, but he might crisscross. There's a bit of smoke coming from car number 97 as well. And have a look at Courtney. Hazelwood's moved up now into fourth while all that was going on. And now it's David Reynolds' turn to assault down here at turn one in the Penrite entry. What a great battle. An absolutely extreme battle between some very, very talented racing drivers. So here we go. Down the hill now for the final time. After one heck of a battle, he was able to apply supreme pressure. Great strategy this afternoon. And he lines it up and picks up maximum points this afternoon, Shane Van Gisbergen. And he bags a win in Western Australia. But Shane gets it done one more time. Nice work this afternoon for our reigning champion. He bags the points and he moves his career tally on to 78 in the process and three victories here in Western Australia and it's actually his third in 2023 as well and he got home by half a second from Brody Kostecki David Reynolds in third position so a great podium excellent drive this afternoon by Todd Hazelwood and that group down there should be very proud of that at Cool Drive Courtney his tyres were sad at the end followed by Payne, Slade, Davison, Randall, Feeney our top ten